Hi guys, in this video we're going to take a quick look at this Buccaneer S2B from Airfix. This is one of those kits that didn't really jump out at me when it was first released a few years ago now, 2019 I think, in its original guise. But when Airfix recently re-released this in the Gulf War variant with the new decals and paint scheme, something about it sort of jumped off the shelf at me. It's worth remembering that this is the 172nd scale kit, not Airfix's recent 148th scale release. However, even then the tooling for this, as I say, is only from 2019, so it is still a fairly new tool. The Buccaneer is quite a venerable aircraft, first designed in the 1950s for the Royal Navy. It was initially designed to perform low-level attacks, flying below enemy radar, and throughout its life it was also used in the nuclear deterrent role, and it was modified to carry anti-shipping missiles. It entered service with the Royal Navy in 1962, and wasn't retired until the end of March 1994. As seen in this boxing of the kit, one of the last missions the Buccaneer undertook was during the 1991 Gulf War, where it was deployed in the laser designation role, so highlighting targets typically for tornadoes to attack. Because the Buccaneer's deployment to the Gulf was quite unexpected, after all it was quite an old aircraft, they were quite hastily painted overnight in this sort of desert pink scheme, and on any photos you can see of these aircraft, they are quite heavily weathered and uh, patched up. So I think when I come to build this kit, I'll have to reflect that in the, uh, in the paint scheme. The side of the box shows us the two paint schemes included, although they are essentially the same. It's the desert pink colour that I just mentioned, and the only difference is the nose art, which I'll show you when we look at the instructions in a moment. So if we look inside the box and start with the instructions, we have the standard Airfix Affair, although I do think they have improved quite a lot recently, with a few sort of uh, helpful features. In particular, I do quite like the colour highlighting here of the new parts. We don't have the highlighting of the edges to glue like we did in the 124th scale Spitfire, but still the instructions are nice and clear. We don't do too much in each step, so it's not too uh, confusing. And we have the colour callouts on each part, although these are in humble colour codes rather than uh, colour names. So you can see we build up the seats in the first couple of steps, and then by the end of step 9 we should have the cockpit built up there and uh, ready to go into the fuselage. And we do have some decals there to go on to the uh, instrument panels. In fact, when you see those in a moment, when we look at the sprues, you will see that those instrument panels are completely flat. There's no raised detail on them. So we do need those decals there to give us, uh, give us that detail. Once that's done, we encase the cockpit into the fuselage halves. Then we have to drill some holes for the weapon pylons. Now, I don't know if there are different options here, different configurations. Um, it looks like there must be. Step 76 and 77 there, so I'll have to check that later in the instructions. At this point as well, we can decide to have the aircraft with the wings folded for use on an aircraft carrier. And if we decide that, we're going to have to cut those wings off there, where the line indicates. I haven't decided yet whether or not I want to do that. I suspect, since it's fairly small in 172nd scale, I'll probably keep the wings deployed. Then we've got the uh, parts of the engine that are exposed, a few internal sort of um, bulkheads, and the lower part of the fuselage meeting the upper. The engines continue in step 20 and 21, and then step 23 is an optional step. So step 23 to 25 we only complete if we are building it with the wings folded. So we have that small piece there in step 24 and 25, which goes into the end of the wing, obviously, to hinge the wings up. Then step 26 is if the wings are deployed as normal. And we have that kind of uh, bracing support piece there for that purpose. Over the page again, and we start to build up the tail. Now, if I remember correctly, the Buccaneer has a distinctive split air brake at the rear, I'm not sure if this kit includes that, let's have a look. 
it doesn't look like it, it looks like the tail just closes up. So in step 37 we add the um, engine intakes. That distinctive high uh, tail at the back. Oh then, sorry I was wrong, then we do add the air brake there at the back and we have an option of having the air brake deployed so that's what step 45, 46, 47 down to step 49 and if we want to have the air brake closed we have uh, step 50 and interestingly there on step 50 we do actually have separate parts we've got either G1 and G2 or B5 and B6 depending on the A and B marking schemes so there appears to be a slightly different tail or air brake for those two different schemes. I can't really tell the difference too much on the instructions, it looks just like some slightly different panel lining, but we'll have to check that out later on. 52, we have another option, we can leave the weapons bay open or closed, although we have no weapons to go in the bay, I believe we only have weapons supplied to go on the underwing mounts. In the next step we've got a few bits and pieces to put on the underside of the aircraft, then the nose gear, main landing gear, and in step 72 there we have an option to have the landing gear um, raised. Step 73 here we have this figure with, uh, I've just noticed that in the instructions, it looks like quite a comedy head. Um, they don't look like that on the sprue but that, uh, that pilot's head does look rather enlarged there in that diagram. Uh, and we get two pilots, of course. Well, well, not two pilots, but uh, you know, two figures to go in the cockpit. They're not both pilots, of course. Canopy glass going in in 74. Then we have our weapons options here for step 75 onwards, with some decals for the pylons. And then step 80 gives us an option there. So 76 and 77 are two options for the weapons pylons on the outer wings and equally we can add what looks like an external fuel tank step 75 or sort of a blanking plate there and that takes us to the end of the instructions more or less just finishing off with a few bits and pieces to uh, fold those wings away if that's what we want to do okay moving on to the painting instructions as I say, both the schemes are extremely similar. We've got this um, hastily applied desert pink scheme all over. And the first aircraft is here, here is XW533A, which is Fiona slash Miss Jolly Roger, Operation Granby slash Desert Storm, early 1991, based in Bahrain. Over the page, very similar, XV863S, Debbie slash Seawitch, same time period, also based in Bahrain. Essentially the only difference here is the nose art. On the first scheme here we have the pirate flag on the port side and we have a scantily clad lady on the starboard side. And on the other scheme we have the pirate flag on the port side and a differently scantily clad lady on the starboard side. So you've got a choice of uh, ladies there. Okay, let's have a look at the plastic itself. I hope there's not too much noise in the background, it's absolutely hammering it down with rain outside. So first up we have this sprue with the main aircraft components. Parts of the wings, the tail, the upper and lower fuselage. As you'd expect with any modern kit, but especially Airfix, the ejector pin marks are all in sensible places. So these are the tops of the wings and the ejector pin marks on the inside. And I feel like we have some decent panel lines there, not as deep or trench like as some of their recent tools like the uh, Lancasters for example. Although that's not such a recent tool these days. Nice details on the wheels there for example, and notice that we can see through that wheel 
to the uh, cutting mat below. That's quite a nice detail to have those holes cut out in 172nd scale. The underside of the fuselage has lots of detail. Those are circular marks there and not eject pin marks of course, they are detail for the bomb bay. Moving on to the next sprue and we've got lots of bits and pieces. If we zoom in we can see the two halves of the ejector seats which we start with in the first uh, step of the instructions. We have the two figures here which look decent and have far more sensible size heads than the instructions suggested. I can see those painting up nicely and looking decent in the cockpit. We've got some uh, landing gear legs there and lots of the bits and pieces which will be added at various stages of the build. The next step is lots of smaller fuselage parts, typically um, fairings and uh, weapons pylons. You can see we've got the weapons themselves there as well. Those are paveway um, laser guided bombs I think. Perhaps not the finest detail on those but I don't think they're terrible either. Certainly I can see these pieces painting nicely and looking good after a wash. On the next sprue we have a few random pieces again. Here you can see that cockpit floor I was talking about with the um, smooth instrument panels with no detail on them. So they'll get the decals on top. Parts of the engine, the undercarriage and the cockpit. We've got the other sides of the wing there. Those are fuel tanks I believe they are. Moving on to the penultimate sprue. So this will be the nose into which the cockpit fits. Engine access panels there undercarriage doors and there is that air brake which I mentioned before so that's the air brake in the open position the deployed position engine detail or fan detail and then finally looking at the clear parts quite a small sprue so despite all the other options in the instructions we do only get the option of having the canopy closed I believe which is a bit of a shame but uh, hey ho And then moving on to the decals, all of the cockpit decals in the top left, various weapons markings and uh, stencils across the bottom. Top right is the various codes for the two marking options and the roundels. And then we've got those uh, pirate flags there and the dominant nose art. Interesting that we get two pirate flags even though they do look identical. Actually maybe they are slightly different aren't they? Those, the two schools there are slightly different. That's interesting then that uh, FX have done that, good attention to detail. And then you've got your Sea Witch there on the left and the Jolly Roger on the right. So there we go guys, that was a super quick look at the Airfix Buccaneer Gulf War version in 172nd scale. I'm hoping I'll get a lot more time to build in the near future because it's coming up to school holidays. And of course I'm going to try to smash out some of those dioramas that I've been working on for a long time, or more accurately uh, thinking about working on for a long time but realistically just looking at. I hope you enjoyed this video. I would like to say a huge thank you to all of you for watching and special thanks to my YouTube members and Patreon supporters. All of your support is massively appreciated guys, thank you very much. I'm going to run off now to Silverstone for the Formula 1 but I will be back next week with a video. Until then, thanks again for watching and have fun modelling.